Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and another Topic Tuesday here. Today's topic is old faves versus new faves. And I just feel like I can't be the only one who goes through phases when it comes to my hobbies. Actually, not just hobbies, like the foods that I eat, the clothes I wear, the makeup that I like, all of that. I am someone who is admittedly very fickle when it comes to my likes and my dislikes. I'm gonna be honest, it makes my boyfriend insane because I think for like the first four years of our relationship, I was like, yeah, I don't like bacon, it's disgusting. I hate bacon, I don't like bacon. And then one day I was like, yeah, let's get some bacon. And he's like, are you serious? Like you told me you don't like bacon. I was like, yeah, I didn't like it then, I like it now. And he's like, what changed? Nothing, I just like it now. So now whenever I say I don't like something, he goes, do you actually not like it or do you just not feel like eating it right now? And I'm like, well, you call me. When I say that I hate something, it's almost never permanent. And that extends to nail polish and like nail polish colors, finishes, etc. The types of colors and finishes and even brands that I was really into when I first got into polish all the way back in 2015, so seven years I've been collecting, they are so vastly different from what I like now. It's really weird to think about that. I didn't even like realize how drastic it was until I started writing up my little kind of notes for this video. And I was like, oh yeah, I really have changed my taste a lot. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys five polishes that I absolutely loved, like could not be caught without, had to have them, wore them multiple times. You will see the fill lines on most of these are very drastic. And then I will show you five polishes that I can't shut up about now and just wait till you see how drastically different they are from my original five. And then there is, there's one, there's one polish that is an old fave and a current fave. And you guys already know what that is. So I'm going to show it to you at the end for like two seconds because everyone, including myself, is sick of me saying it. So let's start with the old faves. And the way that I pick these is, you know, cause sometimes people ask me like, what is my process for picking the favorites or whatever that I'm gonna talk about on my channel? Well, let me tell you this time, I thought back to in from 2015 to 2016, that was my first year being in Polish. And in 2016, I moved to Japan to teach English and Delta is who I flew through. And they would only let you bring X amount of like a certain cosmetic before it started looking like you were trying to like, I don't know, bring them over and sell them abroad. And so I could only bring a certain number of nail polishes and I really wanted to stick to that because I didn't want to chance it and then have some of my nail polishes taken from me. So these five were in the bunch that I took over to Japan with me. And then when my boyfriend came over to visit me, I had him bring some polishes so I could swap some, but these five still remained with me. So I had very basic tastes back in the day. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but compared to what you guys know about me now, you're probably gonna laugh. And let me just say, I might rag on these polishes a little bit, but that's not a mark against you if you like them. These are very well-loved polishes from my collection and I was the one who loved them and I still have nostalgia for them. So like these aren't bad. I just think it's funny that these are the polishes that were my old faves versus what I have to show you later. So first of all, Orly's Mirror Ball. Like the fill line on this is absurd. This is, I wore this one so much. And I thought this was the coolest, most unique, most interesting polish at the time. And there was nothing in this world that could compare to Orly's Mirror Ball. Just think about that for a while. This was the coolest, most interesting polish in my mind. I was convinced that we had peaked with Orly's Mirror Ball, all right? And you know what? Actually, like looking at how hollow it is, I can see why. I can see why I liked it. And it's like, don't get me wrong, I, st I still like this, but I know that if I want a super sparkly silver nowadays, I'm going to reach for by Danny Vienna's Cinnabon Sugar because it's just got another interesting layer with like some brown glitters sprinkled in to look like cinnamon. Whereas this is a very flat and dull silver unless the light is really, really playing on it. And so I think that was where I finally kind of faced out of this one. Also, it is a total B word to remove. Like it is, it is gritty. It is quite gritty. I, I can't believe 
every time I pull this out, I'm like, I cannot believe I went through this much of this polish. It, it really baffles me. I should just use it up, but it's kind of, I feel nostalgic, you know, I don't want to use it up. The second polish may shock you. This is Orly's Star Spangled and definitely not as drastic of a fill line, but a fill line nonetheless. And having a visible fill line on an Orly bottle, to me, that's an accomplishment because these bottles are huge. These are like, I think they're like the biggest nail polish bottles really in the game that I'm aware of. They are 18 milliliters, so 0.6 ounces for those of us who don't understand milliliters. But yeah, I guess, you know, I always just liked Orly right from the start. Even before I really knew much about brands, I really liked these bottles because I really liked the caps and the way that they felt and they were just really easy to paint on. This is back when Orly had the skinny brush and not even the paddle brush. So dedication, right? I loved this red. I thought it was so classy. I was like, oh, night on the town putting on this little sparkly guy. And now when I look at it, I'm just like, ew, it looks like Christmas. So my, my stance has obviously changed quite a lot, but I'm just so mentally like stuck on like this concept where I'm like, you have to have, you have to, you must have one good classy red in your collection. It's a staple. You have to have it. It's a requirement. The police will come and arrest you if you don't. Like that's how I feel about like red. That's why I still like, fixate on red, even though I don't like to wear it that much. There's really nothing that I've swapped in to replace this in my mind. It's just, I've really phased out of sparkly reds because if you thought I couldn't remove regular reds, like sparkly reds, a whole other ball game, but I don't know. It's, it's still fine. It's just, it just, no offense, it just looks like something my mom would wear and I don't want to wear that. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's my biggest thing with it. I'm like, this looks like something my mom gets done at the salon and I don't, I just don't want to look like that, I guess. So those were two Orleys and then the next three faves are all Essies, which probably is really surprising because I never really talk about Essie on my channel aside from one polish <laughs> because I'm just not a big Essie fan. I, it's just not my favorite brand. There's really no reason for it. I just, I think the bottle's... I don't like the bottles that much and um the colors they really started adding more interesting colors after i had already kind of fallen out of the essie love so i don't know maybe one day i'll get back in essie but right now i'm just kind of like doing other things sorry girl but when i first got into polish i was like reading like cosmos and you'd always see like oh these essie polishes and stuff and so that's why i bought a lot of them and i ended up buying the staple mint candy apple and you know you can see the fill line on this and this is the the old bottle with the awful thin brush. So this is really hard to work with, which means that I was so dedicated to use almost half the bottle because it dries like almost as fast as you're putting it down. So it really just pulls up on itself and gets really chunky and thick. And so like the longer your nails are, the harder this one is to apply, but it's such a beautiful color. <laughs> I just can't, I love this color. There are, two different colors of this. There's the mintier color, and then there's the bluer colored one, because I guess they reformulated it. Somehow I have both of them. I think I got the bluer one when I like got somebody's D-stash, but I always preferred the mintier mint candy apple. It just It just makes sense, right? I love Tiffany slash Robin's egg type blues, and I feel like this kind of fit into that category of those types of colors for me. And I even did early on, I did a video about like my favorite or like all of my Tiffany blues that I have and just trying to see which one had the closest to the actual true Tiffany blue color. And I believe I did include this one. Obviously like the real winner is Picture Polishes Tiffany. And so now when I have the urge to wear a color like this, I go for the Picture Polish version over this one every time. But this is another one where I'm like, oh, should I just use it up? But then I'm like, oh, nostalgia. Guess what we got? yet another red and yet another almost halfway gone fill line so like i said i'm not lying when i tell you this was my favorite red of all time and it's like see what i mean by fickle like in my old faves we had two reds in my new faves you would not find a red in like the first hundred polishes i'm sure <laughs> it's just like so weird how that changed so drastically for me but this is such a good color this was actually knocked out of my favorite reds recently, like 
and by recently I mean a little over a year ago, but this still has a special place in my heart because this was my go-to red um, aside from this glitter bomb here. So kind of weird, really weird. Do you guys have anything like that where it was like you used to be obsessed with, I don't know, a color or a finish or whatever, and now you can't even stand to wear it? And last of the old faves is another Essie. This is No Place Like Chrome. And let me tell you, the hold that Metallics had on me when I first got into nail polish was insane. I thought they were the coolest thing ever. And it's so weird how this settles. Like you can see all the pigment is right here and then like the, the base, I don't know. But then you mix it up and it looks super, it looks like molten metal. I don't know if like the reason I love the metallic so much was just like that leftover Y2K influence or what, like just kind of oozing through the cracks in my brain. Cause now I'm just like, I don't yearn for anything metallic, but man, like early 2000s, everything, literally everything had to be metallic. I wanted like metallic stuff on my shoes, on my clothes. I loved like all the electronics that had little metallic accents. I loved it. And I feel like as an adult that just kind of, this was me getting like the last little bit of that out of me. And now I'm just like, eh, it's, if it's metallic, uh, whatever, you know? It's just like metallic was peak cool when I was a kid, you know? Now it's all like super neutrals. I see kids like walking around in like super neutral, like chill vibe outfits. And like, like the way that the Kardashians kids dress, you know, very like natural earth tones. And it looks wonderful. It looks beautiful. But as a kid, man, that was not me. I was like Nickelodeon gack colored everything, you know? I have ridgier nails on a good day and metallics really, really show off those ridges. And so I was rocking this like ridges everywhere. I didn't even like, I was like ridge filling base coat. Who is she? Like, I don't need that. It was like, mountains, mountains on my nails because of the ridges. And I still wore this all the time. Now I really rarely wear a straight metallic unless I'm using it for some sort of stamping. Cause there's something about metallics. They do stamp really well in my experience. Like this particular Essie I've used for stamping quite a few times and it works really well. So if you are over metallics, uh, maybe try them with stamping cause having them in smaller amounts, it's, it's a little bit better, a little less Y2K. Now let's move on to some of my newer faves and you'll kind of see just how vastly different they are. So the first one that really came to mind for me was Envy Lacquer's Grandpa's Garden. This is one that I gushed over for months when I got it. Um, yeah, I got this back in March and I still think about it like twice a day. <laughs> it's just like, it's a reflective green glitter, which is like the reflective glitter is a newer trend right now. And it's got these colored flakies that they have like pinks and yellows and just like floral tones. And it's supposed to look like like a, a lawn or like a yard filled with flowers on your nails. And it's just one of those I love polishes that emulate their inspiration so perfectly. And it does have some sentimental value to me because my own grandpa and my grandma, they both really tended their garden when they were more able-bodied. And it's just like good memories of seeing them out there working on the flowers and, and the vegetables and things like that. So even though this is tough to remove, it is worth it. And I realized like early on, I don't think I really owned many, if any greens. And now it's like greens are all I like long for. So this is a really good representation of my new faves. Then we have Wildflower Lacquer's Stolen Flame. As soon as I got this, I knew it was special. It's it's absolutely loaded with flakies, but it is so easy to work with. I wore it for my birthday this year because I'm like, yeah, that's my B-Day power color. I think this is going to be my like every year for the rest of my life or until it runs out birthday polish. You know what I mean? And when I first got into polish, like flakies were not even something I really knew about, not something that ever crossed my mind. And if I saw a polish like this early on, I think I would have been intimidated because it's just such a vibrant, bold color. And I was still kind of dipping my toes in at the beginning and being a little bit more subtle. So this never would have made it into my collection like seven years ago. Speaking of colors that I never would have touched with a 10 foot pole about seven years ago, Orly's Elysian Fields. This is, I think the only cream in my current faves right now, but you know why, you know why. Look at this color. This is. This is not something that I was into even just three years ago. I think it was really 
early pandemic times that I started getting into these like swampier or just more unusual tones. And I don't know if that's just the natural evolution of things. Like eventually you've seen all the pretty brights and beautiful ones so many times that you're oversaturated and your brain is looking for something new to stimulate it. And for me, it was just gross greens. I don't know. But yeah, I still have mainstream faves, you know? I still like mainstream brands. I just, I prioritize indie brands now because there's something just really fun and special about them. And like, they have a smaller community and, and things like that, so that's always fun. But something like this, a color like this to me, is really special when it comes from a mainstream brand because I feel like it's really rare to see something like this come from a big brand. I feel like it's, it's a risk that only indies typically tend to take. It's definitely not for everyone, but for me, it was love at first sight. Then we have Hollow Taco's Everything Taco. This definitely would have been a fave early on too, but I just didn't, like I said, I didn't know about flakies. I didn't have a ton of toppers that weren't just really plain hex glitters. I wasn't aware of all the fun different finishes and styles of nail polish. And I just, I'm a sucker for this concept. I love that they were like, we're just gonna mix everything together. It just reminds me of when I was a kid and we go to a fast food restaurant and you could like fill up your own soda cup. Because I like to do that thing where you put just one of every soda into the cup and make a big like potion with it. And that's what this reminds me of a lot. So, and the fact that I don't even really like iridescent flakies that much, but I love this polish should tell you how much I love this polish. And I think that this one did come back to the website. So if it was one you missed out when they released their two year anniversary collection, go check it out because I'm pretty sure it's online. And last but not least, we have BKL's You Were My Monster. And this one, it's kind of funny. I really resisted when I first got into nail polish. I didn't care for shimmers, which is such a basic finish. You'd think like you didn't like shimmers, but I really only wore creams and then I would wear like glitters a little bit. I confused in my head like shimmers with um, like frostier nail polishes. And I was just like, oh, that's like too old lady-ish. I can't be wearing that. And then I'm like, well, like as I've gotten older, I'm like, first of all, who cares if it's old lady-ish? Old ladies are cool. They have all the best stuff. And second of all, um, who cares? Like it's, 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 it, it is cool. Like I really like this polish specifically because I have grown to like unusual shimmers. And what I mean by that is like shimmers that really contrast with their base and like this is a gray with a vibrant vibrant purple shimmer i bet you can kind of see it reflecting in the bottle there yeah there you go it's just a really cool contrast between this very subtle very like neutral chill calm color and then the shimmer is just like boom boom in your face and i think that like the polar opposite nature of it is really what drew me to this but also I just love the color taupe and I think that's kind of what you would describe this base as so it's perfect for me so yeah those were my five old faves and my five new faves and then I have one timeless fave and you know what it's Essie's Chinchilli and then I'm gonna just not talk about it ever again okay goodbye we're done talking about it you guys are sick of it and I'm sick of saying it I'm not I want to talk about it all the time I love it so yeah, that is everything. Do you guys have any old favorites that you can't stand now? Do you have any old favorites that have really stood the test of time or anything like that? Let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.